Well, let's begin with uh, talking about the level and extent of damage. Remember, 202 people are still missing. The rescue teams are working tirelessly on ground to trace the missing people. That is the immediate focus right now after a glacier broke off in Chamoli district of Uttarakhand yesterday, triggering major flash floods that has also washed away the Rishi Ganga power project. And 27 people, of course, has been rescued but ni and 19 bodies recovered so far. The catastrophe has left behind a trail of destruction. The Rishi Ganga hydropower project near Joshimath has got washed away. Also, another NTPC hydro project is severely damaged. Uh, this was on the Dholi Ganga River, which is partially damaged. Five bridges have collapsed. Thirteen villages have been cut off because of the surge of water. And the construction work and infrastructure work around that area in the valley have also suffered major damage. That's the extent of damage that we are talking about. What we are going to do today in the, in the big story is to understand this phenomena, this disaster that has struck this part of the state of Uttarakhand. I'm joined by Dr. O.P. Mishra, who's a scientist at the National Center for Seismology, Ministry of Earth Sciences. Good afternoon, Dr. Mishra. We're looking forward to the conversation to understand from you the reasons and the possibilities of something of this nature that has struck the country. But before I come to you for uh, my questions that I have for you, I want to just uh, quickly uh, play out a ground report for our viewers' understanding of the things there. The locals of the Raini village, which is located in the Chamoli district, is completely cut off from other parts of Uttarakhand right now. They are also scared and angry with the administration, and there's a reason for that. There are many local residents who are now saying that they were completely against the idea of these hydropower projects because they thought that there was widespread destruction caused to the environment and to the locality there in terms of cutting off or de destroying hills and rocks and using explosives to do so. All of that the locals apparently had pointed out to the forest department, to the local administration and also to the NGT. They say that we will have shortage of food supply and therefore they are now demanding that the government must immediately relocate them. Let's listen in to Mohit's ground report first. We are reporting from the main point where in Reni village, near Reni village, where the bridge was completely being uh, washed away by the uh, by the Rishi Ganga River and uh, the the connection, the connectivity to that particular side of Reni village has been completely completely cut off because a bridge fell off due to the heavy flow of water. We are now being joined by a few of the locals of Reni village. They say that many of the people from their village are missing. Many have lost their life and they want to raise few questions from the government saying that as of now they don't have details of what exactly happened to their near and dear ones. What's your name? My name is Kalawati. Kalawati ji, where did you come from yesterday? And how many people are in your village who are living in the village? In the village, there are two people in the village. One is the village, one is the village. Four are our village. Now, the other thing is that we are in the village. 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 अच्छा हाँ वो तो मिला नहीं अच्छा पुल टूट गया है कल इतनी बड़ी त्रासदी हुई है क्या 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 उम्मीद करते सरकार से अभी आप क्या उम्मीद कर रहे हमारे लिए स्थापित दो हम क्या मरेंगे हमारे नाम कमाया गौरव या भी नहीं इधर जंगल बचाया और हमारे लिए कुछ नहीं है तो रेडी वाला चलो यहाँ आ रहे हमारे गांव के लिए भी सोचना पड़ेगा बस और कुछ नहीं है। Actually, as of now, what they are saying is that they are very scared as of now, and they want that they should be helped by the district administration of the government or the government as soon as possible. And they say whatever happened yesterday has really was really devastating, was has really scared them. So we have to wait and watch what exactly will government do for this because you see, one part of the rainy village has been completely cut off from the other parts of Uttarakhand. We have to wait and watch what exactly will be the steps taken by the government, though the government is saying they will be providing ration and food, vegetables, everything to the 13 villages that have been completely cut off from the other parts of Uttarakhand. Dr. Mishra, I want to ask you, you know, of course, we'll come to the issue of whether there were these power projects and other infrastructure projects in contravention of environment norms. But before that, coming to the, the glacier burst, so to speak, uh, which reports are calling it, I want to understand from you that now we are also being told that this is untimely, this is unnatural, and there's a mystery around why at this time of the year, when it's still winters going on, there could be such a thing as a glacier burst, because some scientists believe that this is a very rare incident. The Google 
Google images and the Google Earth pictures do not show a glacial lake uh, near this particular region. What is your understanding, sir, of what could have happened? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Actually, uh, you know the Uttarakhand is one of the, the the important and very technically very complex area, and uh, it is not only the, uh, the only associated with the glass or the glaciers. There are the many uh, in all the entire South Asia. When we are there in the Sark Disaster Management Center, there is over 2,300 glaciers more than that, which has been actually mapped by the satellite images. But uh, there are there are several uh, uh, smaller scale glaciers which is not known to us still till today. But it is not a timely because it is just totally a completely a natural phenomena. So if you see that the the retreating of the glaciers is taking place, and the formation of the of the glacial lakes are equal to in the processes bounded by the sediments and some boulders. Now the question is that it is not only temperature differential okay. changes leads to a glacial bond. It is not only a temperature change. There is some tectonic activities happening. In okay. If you see the Arctic area, you cannot you cannot overlook that effects because if you take a five years of the earthquake scenario okay. in the Chamoli area, there were 57 earthquakes happened hmm. of the micro varying from 2.8 magnitude on the Richter scale in the moment magnitude 2.8 to 5.6. If you take average average energy generation, it is come to a 10 to about 10 to the power 19 newton meter. So that was the means there is something technically disturbances taking place that generates the energy which can okay. imbalance the glaciers, you know, the glaciers thickness. We have already reported in third poll earlier that glacial melting is also one of the of the creating the unloading on the earth crust. And glacial accumulation of masses is also creating the loading on the on the earth crust. So this is the, the 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 phenomena that there is something energy generated for years and years. It's not only one day or two day or today earthquake okay. or, or or earthquake of tomorrow. It was the years of the years tectonic complexity lead to the okay. instability of the instability of the foundation on which the ice sheets are there. So there is some instability factors happen in terms mm -hmm. of the some tremor which is not perceptible and it is not actually recorded or it was in in, in, in many 2.1, 2.2, okay. 2.3, 2.3 slots like that. So that could be there that it creates the cracks in the moraine. Moraine is the boundary and it was the arresting factor of the entire mm. unmelted ice. So that ice sheet, so that is the, maybe the one of the region of the natural, okay. natural okay. phenomena. Se second point I want to just mm. uh, give you the... So what uh, you're saying, Dr. Mish okay, please continue. Yeah, there could be, there is no any known glacial outlet, means uh, glof, means glacial lakes was imaged by satellite, but there is some thing, it is, could be the connectivity to the, some a smaller and some bigger lake, uh, lakes, which is not accessible by the human being or even by the satellite, it could be a newly developed or new glacial lakes could be there, okay. So this could be, uh, I think there is some tectonic forces. Okay, what you're saying, Dr. Mishra, if I, if I can summarize it for our viewers, yes, so you are saying that it's not about temperature changes only, there are tectonic changes and there could be presence of unknown glaciers, not everything is traced and mapped all the time. What I want to understand from you that since it is widely known that this is an area where these kind of tectonic changes are witnessed, is it a good idea to have these hydropower projects? You know, uh, of course, that would require clearing a certain area. It would require deforestation. That is the question that is now coming up. Were there certain environmental norms which were not paid heed to? And more importantly, there are glacier studies which apparently were ignored by the government. Are you aware of that? Are you, are you also uh, of the view that that could be the reason the government, according to one study, did not consider the glacier study while setting up the project in these hills. And like I mentioned earlier, at least one power project has been completely destroyed. Yeah, first of all, I would like to uh, dispel a doubt on it that the almost all natural, uh, the, the natural uh, events which is occurring there and there is the also the development processes is taking place by taking all the precautionary or engineering solution, technology solutions. And I can say that uh, in the glacials in the Himalaya, 
whatever the knowledge we gained through the about the glaciology and glacials there is a separate department of the glaciology study in india too much work has been done by drdo in sase you know that and whatever the information we have already gathered so much okay. it was a very dynamic mode we are doing even the wadia institute of himalayan geology has its glaciology department they are taking in the uttarakhand itself they have a lot of the of the of the archive on the glacial lake and they are doing enough now the question arises that the development and the and the and the and the environmental sustainability balances it is going hand to hand you see such type of the things is that whenever any power plant was stopped was was designed uh, earlier or now we were any dpr we taken all the estimates of everything of the of the facts are there but natural phenomena and its strength that is going to create the havoc it is still not completely known to us i will give you one example in the in the case of the in the in the arunachal okay. pradesh the, the we are working for the when i was in geological survey of india we worked for the seismic design for the devang project multi purpose devang project and we know that it was the himalaya the tectonic belts but but of course many tectonic belts are tectonically very active but we are taking care of that when you see the japan it was the juxtaposition yes. of four plates there is lot of mountains going on there is also the earthquake prone countries better more than india but they are taking all the plan technologically viable and taking all cares of so it is not that that we are mm -hmm. constructing the dam and we are creating the earthquake it's not that i told you that it is the natural okay. tectonic now mm -hmm. now the question okay. is that right but that there are argue. there are of course uh, another argument that certain man made factors could be also responsible for intrusion and invasion into nature you are saying no there are enough studies the government does a balancing act between development and sustainability i take your point i'll come back to you also to understand why these phenomena are not predictable or can they be predicted i'm coming back to that question but before that i want to just uh, update our viewers on what's happening on ground as well uh, we're going to take a look at the rescue operation which is currently on which is on in full swing in fact in the second tunnel it is feared that at least 30 people are trapped there this has happened because an entire slush the mud uh, has flown downstream in high speed and that has accumulated in certain parts blocking tunnels where there were workers and these are mostly workers associated with the power plants there and in one such ntpc plant tunnel 30 people are here trapped because of the treacherous terrain the low temperature and like i said the blockage of these parts uh, accumulation of slush has made it very difficult uh, for the rescuers let's listen into this report being joined by some of the family members of those who are still trapped in the debris those who are still uh, trapped inside the tunnel will speak to them they are here since last evening since the time they got to know that this tragedy has taken place sir aapka naam mera naam suren singh bandari suren ji aapka aapke parivar ka kaun hai andar jo bhi phasa hua hai aur forces ki or se aapko kya jawab diya ja raha hai mere कुछ बच्चा है छोटा वाला है आपका बच्चा है हाँ बच्चा है फिर बच्चे जाए दो बच्चे जाए अरविंद है रोहित है रोहित अकेले लड़का है कल से कुछ पता नहीं कल से कोई पता ही नहीं फोन लग रहा है टनल के अंदर कुछ कोई फोन नहीं लग रहा कुछ नहीं लग रहा दोनों यहाँ क्या काम करते थे ये सप्लाई में काम करते तीनों सप्लाई में काम करता आपके परिवार का कोई फसा है सर मेरा भाई फसा है छोटा भाई फसा है भाई फसा है जी अच्छा। जी क्या काम करता था वो सर ये पानी के उसमें था सप्लाई में हाँ और लेकिन कल से हम आए हुए हैं लेकिन काम बता रहे हैं अब बताएंगे किस समय बता रहे हैं सौ मीटर हो गया किस बता रहे हैं कि कुछ तीस से पैंतीस लोग अंदर अभी भी फंसे हुए किस समय बता रहे हैं पचास साठ लोग हैं कोई अनुमान नहीं बता रहे कोई अनुमान नहीं बता रहे क्या नाम है आपके मेरा उसका नाम सर सतेश्वर प्रसाद पुरोहित है मेरा नाम लक्ष्मी प्रसाद पुरोहित है फोन लग रहा है फोन नहीं लग रहा सर दीपक टमटा सिविल इंजीनियर है सिविल इंजीनियर है कल से कोई पता कोई पता नहीं है सर कल से हम इन्हें परेशान हो गए शासन पर कल सीएम भी आए थे यहाँ पे हाँ। लेकिन यहाँ पे कुछ नहीं था दस बजे आपदा आ गई थी बारह एक बजे आए सीएम यहाँ पे हाँ। तो लेकिन जब सीएम आए तब यहाँ पे जनता जुड़ी मतलब लोग तो थे यहाँ पे पहले सब लेकिन ये मशीन है देखो ना आप देखो ना सामने वो है हाँ। आर्मी की मशीन लगी हुई एनटीपीसी प्रोजेक्ट है एस प्रोजेक्ट है कोई मशीन नहीं होनी कोई वो नहीं है की मतलब टनल की नहीं देरी का आप इल्जाम लगा रहे देरी आपको कब पता लगा की लापता है और फोन नहीं लग रहा है जैसे ये डैम बाढ़ आई जब हमको पता चला हमारा भाई वहाँ पे है तो हम सब इकहत्तर हो गए हमने कहा भाई फोन लगाया ये क्या वो क्या लेकिन फोन तो लगा नहीं 
Dr. Mishra, uh, was, is it possible that there can be satellite data which will warn of something like this? Because there are uh, researchers who are also telling us that Himalayan regions, the upper reaches, are not monitored enough. If you are saying that this is a highly volatile region for many, re for many factors, there are natural factors and seismological factors, if that is the kind of volatility that is already there, which cannot uh, be averted at all times, shouldn't there be more vigilance, more monitoring of these parts? Yeah, uh, uh, this is the one of the facts because if you take the only the glaciated area of the 11,000 square kilometer, I think the satellite is the has a big eye on monitoring all the things and they are monitoring and they are updating us. But that's at the instrumentation side, the topography is so, okay. much, so much hostile. Topography is so much hostile that putting the the instrumentation at the ground on the surfaces. Mm. This is the maximum uh, coverage. It has been done by many equipments in the Himalaya. We have done it despite so many constraints. But of course, in order to get the each and every inch information, okay. the, the proper site and locations of the instrument, there is a lot of the causes mm -hmm. and the factors which is hindering the scientists to put their observation system. But right. even if they have they, 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 the Chamoli earthquake, you know, the 1999, and after that, a lot of the instrumentation has been done. A lot of the land landslide mm -hmm. study has been conducted from the sponsorship of the projects by the different university and research yes. institute by the Ministry of Earth Sciences. We give them so much money for doing that. And uh, seismological mm. monitoring is the round the corner. And that's why I told you that if you take the, the five years, the seismological data that creates the stress on the crust, and also it disturbs it disturb the stability of the, of the glacials uh, the, the underneath that uh, can have the uh, power to crack the moraine. And then it reinforcement all that. So even in the untimely, mm -hmm. without the temperature changes, that can lead to that. And this is understood, you know. But the prediction needs a lot of the right. multi-thematic data. Prediction needs a lot, lot of multi-thematic data. And we overcome, you see, such a big tragedy. Uh, the communication mm -hmm. system, the response system, the information yes. by the scientists, by the action, is taken in the minimum span of time. It is really the wonder. Of course, we are very sorry and express our so much Mm -hmm. um, uh, but despite uh, that, uh, something uh, like this can yeah. happen, which means that, yes, there are actionable inputs, but it may not always be possible, like you said, to map each and every inch of this territory. It's a treacherous terrain and there are many challenges. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Opi Mishra, and for giving us clarity on this particular phenomena that has happened in the state of Uttarakhand. Let's move on now and talk about uh, this particular village, the Raini village in Chamoli. This is particular significance that Chamoli has in Indian history. This is the area that has battled, of course, a natural disaster. Even as we speak, it is still battling with it. My colleague Avni will now tell you how this small village in this district, actually, uh, this uh, the Raini village that I mentioned, has a history of how it stood up for a cause earlier as well uh, that is uh, very well known as the Chipko Andolan. Avni, over to you for the details on that. Well, that's right. Now, the Raini village uh, that we're talking about where this incident happened, uh, we're in fact talking about how it, the Chipko Andolan really originated from Raini in 1970s. Uh, the movement by environmentalist Sundarlal Bhaguna, who, he's the one who started this uh, uh, movement. Uh, the aim of this Andolan was essentially to prevent cutting of trees. Uh, residents opposed uh, deforestation by Satyagraha and uh, residents hugged trees to protect them. A uh, Chipko movement was largely driven uh, by women. Afrida. All right. Yes, thanks very much, Avni, for giving us uh, the big picture on that.